Hi everyone, welcome back. If you want to press like before you forget, that'd be really helpful. This is something I've just seen in my year 11 exam, and I have student after student have the same problem with what's going on here. If you look at the parabola, any parabola, and if you know what the roots are, you know what the x-intercepts are, most students have no problems, and they'll end up saying, well, the opposite of two is minus two, and they write from that two, they write the minus two and put it in the bracket, not going through lots of technicalities on that, they've got it in other videos. And then if you've got a six, you write that in the bracket as well, but the opposite of six is minus six, and they write that down as the answer, and out of my uh, many students, so I had a whole lot of them do that in the exam that they've just done, of a similar nature. I think it was on cubics, but we'll get the cubics in another video. So let's have a look at what's happened. They've forgotten that there could be another number there. So in other words, I can use those same two roots, and I can stretch that parabola up or down, and dilate it vertically, and that means that I'm, I can multiply it by two or three or four or by a quarter or a fifth or three quarters or whatever I want to. So why do so many students in my teaching career keep forgetting to put another number there or look for another number there? And the interesting part is I can nag about it and people still keep forgetting to put it there. I'm gonna use red, but we're gonna have another number there and I'm just gonna call it A. And we're gonna figure out what that number is. Obvious, the, minus, the two becomes a minus two, the six becomes a minus six. How are we going to find that A? And I keep talking about this. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Substitution. I play games on substitution, writing it like that to get people to participate. Interesting, my classes, people will often call that what it is as a moment I start writing it. So we're going to substitute, but what are we going to substitute? No good substituting the actual x intercepts because that'll just take us around in circles and give us no information. It's this number over here. Now, usually it's better if we use the y intercept now you don't always you're not always able to easily tell what the y intercept on this question we have if i didn't know what that y intercept was i'd be looking for another point that was an obvious point that was accurate from the graph in this question the three is accurate you can see it's going through there a little bit of presumption because it could have slightly missed but we're going to get close at this level most of the time we're just looking at can people interpret the idea that it's a two, a six, and a three? So that three there actually is, don't forget that it's actually zero, three. So we're talking about an X value of zero and a Y value of three. I do say to a lot of students, if you write that on top, it does stop a lot of mistakes. I just see so many mistakes, me included. So if I go back to here, I know that the Y, the Y is three, so I've got three equals A times Y. I'm gonna write the whole thing carefully. A lot of you could just do it in your head, but for those who can't, the x value was zero, so I've got a zero take two, multiplied by a zero take six. So what have we got? We've got three equals a times minus two times minus six, and those two negatives make a positive. So we've got 12, actually here we've got 12a equals three, and people go silly things and go three, and the 12 goes four, and they'll write an answer of four, so watch out for that trap. I still talk about even at this level, if you divide by 12 and you divide by 12, you're going to save the silly mistakes. Of course, you're left with 3 on 12, which is a quarter. So here's our actual equation of that parabola. It is y equals a quarter outside of x minus 2 and x minus 6. So if I'm marking a question like that out of 3, a lot of students will get one mark to see if you can get the quarter. Now, if you want to expand it out, you can. So if we had a look at what that would be, you've got a quarter outside. I'm going to put these big brackets all the way around here because everything's going to be affected by a quarter. I do have students say to me, does a quarter affect this one or does a quarter affect that one or does a quarter affect both? So let's have a look at what happens here. Just to, back to the peekaboo method, if I cover it over the quarter, I've got x times x, what we call the eyebrow method, x times minus 6 is minus 6x, then you've got another minus 2x, and then you've got the minus two with a negative two by the negative six and become a positive 12. So if you have a look at what's going on there, now we've ended up with a quarter of x squared. Now this is a minus six x minus two x. I'm gonna shortcut running out of space, minus eight x. So really all that is, is minus eight x. And I'm gonna do it slowly for a moment, times by that quarter. So can you talk about multiply the tops and multiply the bottoms? because really that's 8x over one. So I'm left with minus 8x over four. So there's your 8x on the top, there's your four on the bottom. See the number of people I see make mistakes with fractions, it's minus two x. 
So we've got minus 2x, then you've got a quarter of 12, and the quarter of 12 is 3, and there's our equation. So that's using the two roots. But what happens if we use the turning point instead? In this case, it's a minimum, but we're looking at, we've often referred to them as the turning point, the TP or the TPs, the turning points. So on this one here, if I go to the turning point form, most people are okay that we're going to write something squared and the x value from that 4, if you go back to other videos, you can find out more about it. So that 4 becomes a minus 4 over here. Just like we had the 2 become a minus 2, the 4 becomes a minus 4, and that's a minus 1. So the stuff that's written inside the bracket does the opposite, but the stuff reading, written outside of the brackets, not under the control of the brackets, stays the same. The minus 1 stays a minus 1. And what do students forget to write? could also be multiplied by a certain number. And we'll see how we'll get the same answer as this, but using that approach. So some people prefer the turning point. I find most students prefer just going with the x intercepts. Let's have a look what happens then. So we're going back to again, substitution. And what are we going to substitute? Well, we do know the y intercept. So I could just simply say old school. I could say substitute zero, three, and then I keep nagging about there's an X and there's a Y video. Sorry, guys, become a bit long. I didn't realise it'd take this long to explain it. So the three goes there, and then you've got A outside of zero, take four squared, minus one. Should shortcut this a little bit. Three equals A times Y minus four squared, 16, minus one. Go a little bit, so sort of year eight. If I add one to that side, I add one to that side, and I've got 16A equals four, and now I'm back to divide by 16, divide by 16. Interestingly, we're not doing the same numbers over here, I was dividing by 12. But we still end up with the same answer of 8 equaling a quarter, which is interesting. And you look at what that means. So let's go back to the equation here. And we've got a quarter of x minus 4 squared minus 1. So I'm going to say most people are going to be right if I do this. I'll put a big bracket probably x times x will be x squared, x times minus 4 is minus 4x and double it. If you want to go through and do x minus 4 and x minus 4, some people will still struggle with that. Well, maybe I'll just do it quickly. You'd have x squared minus 4x minus another 4x, I'm hurrying, plus 16. So you can see you've had two lots of minus 4x. So when I look at this, I go, there's minus 4x when you multiply them, and I've got two lots of them. So instead of writing minus 4x, I can write minus 8x. So over here, you've got the x squared minus the 8x plus the 16. So there's your minus 8x times them and double it. And then minus 4 by minus 4 is 16. I've got to subtract 1. So let's have a look at what happens. We've got a quarter of x squared. We've got a quarter of 8 which is minus 2x. We've got a quarter of the 16, so that's a 4. Take the 1, and we end up with the same equation of quarter x squared minus 2x, and there's your plus your 3. So it really doesn't matter which method you prefer for doing it. I think I normally would default back to using the x intercepts. Oh, I hope that helps. I've been uh, wanting to make that for a while. It's been a while since I've made some videos. Um, Pressure's off and I've got a bit more time to think, so. <sighs> Thanks for watching.